Welcome to C++ for Java Programmers. My name is Professor Califf, and today I'd like to talk to you about reading files in C++. So let's start just with what classes we need to use. Two main classes we're going to be making use of in dealing with files. Today we're going to focus on the IF stream, which stands for Input File Stream. This is a subclass of iStream. Main example of iStream you've probably seen so far is CN. Then we also have a comparable OF stream standing for output file stream, which is a subclass of OStream for output stream. And COUT is probably the main example of that that you've seen so far. So when we've set up to read a file. Of course, the first thing we have to do is connect our object, our file stream, to the file we want to read. So we have two ways to do that. We can do it when we first declare and create the object, if stream in file, and then we can put the file name in parentheses, or we can do a declaration separately and then later open the file name. Most of the time you're going to see people use the first because it's shorter, but of course there are times when we want to open a file stream after we've actually declared the object. Of course, once we're done with a file, we do want to make sure we close it. So this works as you might expect. We simply are going to call close on the file stream. We have three main ways to read data, which are just like the ways that we would read data using CN. So of course, we have the extraction operator. And anytime we're reading words, reading numbers, this can work very well for us. We also might want to process a file sort of line by line. So the standard way to read that if you're working with C++ strings, which I'm going to assume you're going to be doing, is to use get line, which is a function that takes the input stream that you want and then the string to read into. Notice that there is also a get line method of the if stream class, actually of the i stream class that's going to read into a C string as opposed to a C++ string class type string. If you're wanting to do that, feel free. You can have a third argument to get line, which will be the delimiter that you want to stop at. So if you don't want to read line by line, you want to stop when you get to commas, for example. You can use a comma as the delimiter to make that happen. Then finally, we might want to just read the file character by character. Not super common, but sometimes that's the more efficient, easier way to do things. And so the input stream will have a get method that returns just a care. Now, the interesting piece of doing file reading in C++ when you're coming from Java is the issue of reading to the end of the file very common for us to want to do that, where we want to just process everything in a file. The key issue is that we have no look ahead in C++ as we do in Java. So particularly if we use the scanner class, we know that we have this has next, has next end, has next line methods that we can use to check. Do I have anything else to read? We do not have an equivalent in C++. Instead, we have to read past the end of the file to know that we're at the end of the file. If we have 10 things to read, we're going to have to read 11 times. In other words, our last read is going to fail. It has to fail in order to tell us, hey, we're done. So you might be tempted to set up your reading loops something like this, while not in file.eof, EOF stands for end of file, read, and then do whatever you need to do with what you just read. This is the way we would do it in Java, while our input scanner dot has next, read the next item and process it, or while the input scanner dot has next line, read the line and process what we just read. However, this will cause you problems in C++ because the last thing you read when you process it, most likely you're just going to get another copy of the last thing that you read. So you end up with two copies of the last item in the file. Sometimes it'll behave a little bit differently, but it will never be right. Instead, 
we need to set things up so that we're going to read one more item and find out that we ran out of things to read. So one way to do this is called a priming read. The notion is that we're going to read something before we go into our reading loop. Then we have our while not in the file, and then we're going to process what we read that we now know is good because we checked to see if we'd hit the end of file yet, and then read the next thing. So this works a lot like a standard Sentinel controlled loop and is very similar. I read, I check to see if I'm done, then I process the thing that was good and read the next item. So an example little bit with that, I open up a file, my data.txt, set up a string to hold lines of text from that, call get line, so that's my priming read. Then while I'm not at the end of the file, I do whatever I want to do with my line of text that I read, and I get the next line of text. And of course, when I'm all done, I'm going to close my file. And that will work correctly. You will process exactly the number of lines of text that are in the file. So if it has six lines, you're going to process six lines. You're going to attempt to read seven. The seventh read is going to put you past the end of file and set that EOF flag so that you can find out, oh, I ran out of things to read, I'm done. There is another right way that can be short if you're using the extraction operator. Turns out that the extraction operator is going to return something that will get interpreted as false. You can simply say while and put the read inside the condition and then just process whatever you read inside the loop. So this is a nice shorthand, but you'll notice that if I have 10 numbers in my file, this will read 11 times and process 10 of them because the last time it tries to read, it will know that it didn't actually get something and be done. Before I wrap up, I want to go over what includes we're going to need to do this. Anytime we're doing input and output, even with files, we're going to need that IO stream library that we're used to including. We're also going to need the F stream library that contains both our IF stream class for input and our OF stream class for output. And then finally, of course, if we want to use get line, we will still need the string include. Thanks for watching. I hope this gave you a little bit better idea of how to go about reading files in C++ and how that differs from reading files in Java. Hope to see you next time.